In this video, we're going to take a look at the third NoSQL injection lab on Portswigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Exploiting NoSQL Injection to Extract Data. As usual, let's start off by going through the background information that's relevant to this lab. In many NoSQL databases, some query operators or functions can run limited JavaScript code, such as MongoDB's WHERE operator and the MapReduce function. This means that if a vulnerable application uses these operators or functions, the database may evaluate the JavaScript as part of the query. You may therefore be able to use JavaScript functions to extract data from the database. Consider a vulnerable application that allows users to look up other registered usernames and display their role. This triggers a request to the URL slash user slash lookup with the username parameter provided. And that results in the following NoSQL query to the users collection. So it's checking where this dot username equals admin, then it's going to return the result. As the query uses the WHERE operator, you can attempt to inject JavaScript functions into this query so that it returns sensitive data. For example, you might send the following payload. So we say admin, and then we put an apostrophe to say we want to inject into the query. And then we're saying if the first character of the password is A, then it will return true. We have a query at the end, which is just saying or if A equals B, which it never will, so that won't return true. This returns the first character of the user's password, enabling you to extract the password character by character. You could also use the JavaScript match function to extract information. So maybe we use a payload like below to see whether the password contains any digits. And then we could narrow down the word list or the character list from there. OK, another nice quick background section. I'm starting to like these NoSQL labs. And let's just take a look at the lab now. The description says, the user lookup functionality for this lab is powered by a MongoDB NoSQL database. It is vulnerable to NoSQL injection. To solve the lab, extract the password for the administrator user and then log into their account. And we're told that we can log into your own account as usual with Wiener and Peter. So let's take a look at the lab. All right, so of course, I will start by logging in with the credentials that it just gave us. And maybe you'll try some NoSQL injection here, but it did give us a bit of a hint at a user lookup function. So Let's just wait for the login and see what we see. We could open up our dev tools maybe. And let me just reload the page. So yeah, it's getting our user ID equals Wiener. And we also have user role.js. So maybe we go and have a look at the debugger and see what's in that code. And we'll see that it makes a request to slash user slash lookup and takes in the user ID. So all right, kind of similar to what we saw in the example. Why don't we go to Burp Suite and we'll grab a copy of one of these requests. I'll send it to the repeater and maybe we can just play around with this and see if we can get the basic SQL injection or no SQL injection to work. Let's go to the example it gave. All right, so we put in a username and then we inject this to see if the first character of the password is an A. What I'm going to do is start off with the Wiener character or the Wiener user because I'm confusing letters and uh, users there. Yeah, I'm going to start with this one because we know that the password begins with a P. So what if I just URL encode this with control and U so that it doesn't complain. Let's change that to a P. That's the first character of the password. And we click send and it comes back with all the details. What if I change that to the first letter being something invalid? So A is not the first letter of the password. Click send and it says could not find user. OK, cool. So we found a way to identify whether the first character of the password is correct. Now we just want to swap the user to administrator and we want to loop through all of the characters in the password. I'm going to automate that a little bit. So I'm going to do, in fact, let me take a copy of this error message because that's going to be our false condition. Whenever it shows this, it means we've got the wrong character. And I'm going to do control and I to send this to the intruder, then control shift and I to switch to the intruder. And here we go. We want to put in our placement. I'm going to put in the placement. Actually, we're going to put in two placements here. I'm going to go to cluster bomb attack. And I'm going to put in the first one at this zeroth element because we're going to loop through, let's say, 10 characters. Hopefully the password is short. And then I am going to add another insertion point on the character. So the first list is going to be looping through 1 to 10. And I'm going to do that here, 0 to 9. But if you don't have Burt Pro, you can just manually. I think these are, do you need Burt Pro for these? I think so. But yeah, you can just set up a number list. If not, you know, just change this from simple list to numbers. And what just happened there? OK, it's just a drop down. All right, what's the second payload then? The second payload is going to be characters. And maybe we need to do uppercase and numbers. Actually, there is a hint on the lab which says that it's lowercase. So yeah, you could work that out. Maybe you could use the injection that it suggested as well. 
to see first whether there are any characters. But yeah, I'm not going to do that. Let us just try this now. So I also want to add in something to say. If it says that the user isn't found, could not find user, we want to flag it because that's an incorrect response. And I think that's good. Let's hit start attack. All right, it runs through this and it shouldn't take too long. If you don't have Burt Pro, it might be a little bit slower. But there we go, it loops through and here's this error. You can see that quite a few of these didn't come back with an error. So we've actually, oh, the password is shorter than the last time I tried this by the looks of it. So you could just go through and manually try and work out what's the order of this. What I would like to do instead is I'm gonna highlight all of the ones that don't have this column and I'll just go to highlight, pick a random one. And then where it says filter, I wanna say only show the highlighted items and apply. And that just means I can easily now filter it by the payload number. And we see, oh, that's why the password is short. It's because we didn't change the username. Ah, oh, damn it. All right, well, that was a test run. Let's do this again. Let me go back, change the password to administrator and click start. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing again. That's it, the password's looking better now. All right, I'm gonna filter these ones then, or not filter, I'm gonna highlight them. Uh, or you could add a comment or you could have maybe checked to see whether the response had like username in it or email or role. And that would be like a positive response rather than a negative response. So if you see that, then it means that it is correct. And that would have meant that we could easily just get rid of all of the ones that weren't correct. But there's many ways to do this. I'm just trying to just do something quickly. So, all right, let's do this again. Let's get rid of the filter. Show only highlighted items. Now it's going to show only these. We're going to filter by the number of the payload. And then here it is. Now we need to go and type this in somewhere. I can't really see. Is there an easy way? I think there is some way to copy the column, but I can't remember what it is. Can I just do Control C here? I don't know what's going to happen. Let me open up Sublime. And every time I open up Sublime, it always has something like that for me, which I'm never interested in. All right, not very good, but let me just do C L Y I. W, uh, no, yeah, whatever, W, Z, J. I think that's the password and I'm gonna log out as Wiener. I'm gonna come back to log in as administrator, hopefully. Yep. And I need to type it correctly. There we go, we're logged in. Anyway, this has been exploiting NoSQL operator injection to extract data. And in the next video, we'll look at the final NoSQL injection lab, which is exploiting NoSQL operator injection to extract unknown fields. And let me remind you, if you want to find some of these NoSQL injection vulnerabilities and get paid for it, you can check out the Integrity platform, which has a lot of cool bug bounty programs to take a look at. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.